Let's consider this function as fully valued of x minus 2. The vertex happens when x minus 2 is 0. That means the vertex happens at x equal 2. And then the vertex is 2, 0. Other two points are like, if I replace x with 3, then we get 3, 1. And if we replace x with 0, we get 0, 2. And this is the graph of the function. Now, let's consider this new function, g of x equal to 2 times f of x. In this case, we can get a table of points for g. And we notice that if we select the same points for x, 2, 3, and 0, then we are going to get almost the same points for y. Let's see, this is equal to 2 times f of x is x minus 2. Then the points are going to be when x equal 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, times 2 is still 0, 2 comma 0. If x equal 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, actually value this 1, times 2, we give, we give us 2, 3, 2. And if x equal 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, actually value this 2, times 2 is 4. Then we have the point zero four. We notice that the points are almost the same, but the second entry has been multiplied by two. And then the graph is going to look like this. Uh, two zero is here, zero four, and uh, 3, 2. Then, uh, every point in the second entry has been multiplied by 2, and that means that the final outcome is a vertical stretch of this graph. This happens in general. If we have a function g of x, and it's defined like a times f of x with a bigger than 1. Then the new graph of g is going to be, let's write g is a vertical stretch of f by a factor Let's see what happened when we consider an A that is positive but smaller than 1. Then what changes? Here the second entries would be if x equal 2, then we have still 0. For 3, we have 1 half. And for 0, we have 1. Then uh, the points are 2, 0, 3, 1 half, and 0, 1. And we see that the second entries has been multiplied by 1 half. And when we plot those points, we get uh, 2, 0, 3, 1 half, and 0, 1. And this is the... This is the graph of this G. And if we put this graph here, this graph would be like this. And we notice that when we compare the red one with this graph, it's like a vertical compression by a factor of one half. Then let me write that down. Uh, if g of x equal to a f of x and a is bigger than 0 but is smaller than 1, then g is a vertical, is a vertical compression. of f. Let's see other type of transformation. 
let's consider g of x equal to f of 2x. And this is going to be 2x minus 2, right? Replacing x here with 2x. Then we get this function. And we notice that we can get the same outputs, 0, 1, 2, by changing the inputs in a clever way. It's if we consider, instead of 2, if we consider 1 as an input, then we will replace 1. Here we get 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. We get the point 1, 0. If here, instead of 3, we consider 3 half. Let's replace 2 times 3 half. It's just 3 minus 2 is 1. We get the point 3 half, 1. And if instead of 0, we consider 0, then we get still 2. That means that if we have a pair in the graph of f, and we are considering g equal f of 2x, then we get a pair in the graph of g by just changing the first entry by that entry divided by 2. And let's see how the graph of this g looks like. We have the point one zero, three half one, and zero two. We get this graph. And we notice that this is a compression of this graph, but it's a horizontal compression. Then uh, let me write that down. If g of x equal to f of ax with a bigger than 1, then the graph of g is a horizontal compression of the graph of f. If we change the 2 by 1 half, let's see what happened. We consider now g of x equal to f of 1 half of x. This means in the expression for f, anytime I see that x, replace it with 1 half of x. And we get 1 half of x minus 2. We notice that we can get the same outputs, but now we need to multiply the first entries by 2. If we consider x equal 4, when we replace x with 4, we get 1 half times 4, which is 2, minus 2 is 0. We get the point 4, 0. And if we replace x with 6, then we get the point 1 half of 6, which is 3, minus 2 is 1. We get the point 6, 1. And if we replace x with 2, with 2 times 0, which is 0, then we still get 2. Then the relation between these pairs and these pairs is that if we have a pair in the function f of x, when we change the first entry by multiplying it by 2, we get a pair in the graph of g. This graph is going to look like this. We have the point 4, 0, uh, 6, 1, and... 0, 2. And we get this graph. And when we compare this graph with this graph, that is like this. When we compare these two graphs, we notice that the graph of G is a horizontal stretch of the graph of F. Let me write that down.
if g of x equal to ax with a bigger than 0 and a is smaller than 1, then the graph of g is a horizontal stretch of the graph of 